You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Your heart's an empty hole. Your brain is full of spiders. You've got garlic in your soul. Hello, everyone. Grandin Media has asked me to do a video blog, or vlog, I guess we call it, in the lead up to Christmas. I happily agreed, and then I asked them to suggest some ideas. I should have known better. Now don't get me wrong, I've got great admiration for the folks in our communications department who are responsible for Grandin Media. There's great professionalism there and skill among them. Yet they're also known occasionally for coming up with some wacky ideas. And sure enough, they decided to try one out on me. Would your grace be willing to comment upon the Grinch movie? The Grinch? You mean doc Dr. Seuss, the strange green furry guy in a mountain? He's got a dog and he tries to steal Christmas? The very same, they tell me. There's a new movie out and we'd appreciate your thoughts. So I agreed, thinking, well, fools rush in. Now, full disclosure, I've not gone out to a theater to see this new film. I've had to rely upon some online summaries of it. Apparently, the basic story throughout the new film follows the original, but with a twist for the ending, after the Grinch has failed to steal Christmas. Instead of inserting himself right away in the festivities, after he's returned all the presents and the decorations, in this new version, he retreats into himself and he goes back home. It's only after the little child, Cindy Lou, goes after him and invites him to dinner and only after he hesitantly accepts and goes to the home that things really change for the Grinch. Now, how we describe the change is important, it seems to me, because it captures the current reality of the suffering of many people in our day. And how the change is brought about, well, that's what leads us into Christmas. The change in the Grinch, I would describe it this way. The change in the Grinch is from self-isolation to self-gift. The pain of his childhood, feelings of being alone, abandoned, and unwanted in an orphanage, led him to close in on himself and away from all association with others. I'm seeing that repeated today in the lives of many people. And what the, brought the Grinch out of himself was the encounter with a little child who did not give up on him and who led him by that encounter with her and eventually also with her family to realize that he was actually appreciated and wanted for who he is unconditionally. A deep desire for such unconditional acceptance is really what animates the hearts of all of us. Now, I think also instructive is the name of the village where the Grinch's life-transforming encounter took place. It's called Whoville. Whoville. Who I am, not what I am. My inner truth, that's what matters. I count, I matter, simply because I exist, for who I am. But the Grinch needed a real encounter with another who, another unique individual, to discover and eventually celebrate his own who-ness, if I can put it that way his precious individuality that had so long been hidden away under the scars of pain. So I expect the link with Christmas is obvious. It announces the coming of God as a child in order to redeem us from ourselves, to save us from the self-imposed isolation from both God and others occasioned by the harm of sin. And the wonder of Christmas focuses precisely upon the who of this child, He's none other than the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, who has made himself one of us in order to encounter us, so that in that encounter, we might discover the joyful truth of both God and ourselves. In the encounter with Christ, we discover our who. And in that discovery, we learn that in the eyes of God, we're loved, we're wanted, and we're considered necessary. And all of that without condition. Cindy Lou did not give up on the Grinch, and her persistence allowed him to encounter the meaning of love. That encounter with love led him from self-isolation to self-gift, to be a gift for others. His transformation was gradual, yes, but because of the child's persistence, it did happen. God does not give up on us. He never gives up on us. In the encounter with the child born at Bethlehem, we discover love itself 
God is love, is what the scriptures teach us. And God's grace, his love, his mercy, all of that reaches us in the sacraments. And it works upon our self-isolation. And it does so gently, but with persistence, summoning us and enabling us to live no longer for ourselves, but for Jesus and for his people, by making ourselves a gift for others. In a life of self-gift in Christ, we actualize our who. We live as we are intended to live, and we discover real joy. Well, maybe this wasn't such a wacky idea after all. There's something to be learned from this movie. But that learning is only possible because in its own strange way, it brings to mind elements of another story that was told long before Dr. Seuss put pen to paper. That story is the one we shall recall and celebrate at Christmas. May it be for all of us a genuine encounter with God who made himself human in order to transform and save us by a love that will never give up on us. God bless and Merry Christmas to all.